Hello all. Today we will be seeing about uh, some introduction about insurance analytics in order to make ourselves familiar with the why we're doing this analytics in specific the insurance in insurance companies and things. And of course, also we're going to see what is expected from the project. I mean, in terms of what kind of analysis or what kind of uh, insights we're supposed to take uh, on the data. Okay. <clears throat> so just before, just you know, in order to be familiar, actually we're familiar with the words and with the concepts. But just to start, let's see first. There are the users, right? Well, um, of course, the according to the the document, it's the analysis is used for the the company. So we're going to make an analysis for a company in order to attract more um, customers and to provide uh but a better service and things like that but what about from the customer side so why is this important since the company owner the company from the company side we're looking if we know what the customers are in need of and what they are looking for in the company then it's going to be easy to provide the things that they are looking if it is uh, reasonable or if it's possible so first uh, when a person, when or when people choose uh, an insurance company, they're going to look whether the company is safe or not, whether the company is give the best offer or not, and about the reputation reputation of the company in the market. So, as a company owner or on the company side, what we're supposed to do is, you know, like to prove we will try to prove them that it is safe and. We're giving them the best offer. Actually, we we should make sure that we're also giving the best offer and. Also, uh, yeah, the reputation might be might not be something that we can control, but we will try to give or, um, yeah, we'll try to give those three sites. So, but similarly, not only the customers, the insurers can also not understand customer behavior, right? They should understand the behavior um, in order to provide that service crowd because people uh, uh, do uh, some 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 things like they might lie about the about some accidents that they have or they they, they might exaggerate the, that thing so in order to, to protect they should understand what types of fraud are there and what type of people do that fraud in the policy risk claim surety and so like th those are things that are mandatory before giving policy to someone or an insurance so we should understand what the people or what the user the customer is looking for in, in in that type of company and also as an insurance company what can uh, what kind of uh, behavior does our users have so tra traditionally uh, we insurance company uh, there's a, a trend or there's this practice of analyzing all their data like looking for what happened in the past which is descriptive analytics we're going to look the, for the four types of analytics uh, in order to use them for this specific project but people's um, now company uh, companies uh, they look for what happened in the descriptive analytics, but um, the industry now the industry is demanding more, such as what will happen in the future. So there are no, uh, there is no that much working on the future of the future data of the company. So I thought I heard. Okay. So um, so now we're trying to go further than the descriptive analytics and also do the some like predictive and prescriptive analysis we're going to see what they need so why do we need that analytics uh, in in the insurance uh, industry so the first one is let's uh, analyze the customer risk and determine which client is trustworthy or may cause great loss so um i have heard some questions in the previous uh, sessions uh, asking what is uh, risk management or things like that so yeah while in an insurance company, one of the things they are going to look for in a uh, in their customers is if that customer can, you know, usually uh, have or create a great loss. Uh, if it is a car company, a great accident or loss in in like uh, in human life in the car and things like that. So uh, probably the insurance industry will prefer to have a customer who have low risk, right? Who is safe and who is who don't have those types of records <clears throat> so uh, 
it will help for the company to to analyze customer risk and determine which client is trust, trustworthy or may cause great loss. And the other one is analyze create <coughs> analytics, create new capabilities that in that empowers insurers to optimize every functions in the insurance value, which means like now on the first line, let's say that we have identified some customers that are the that fulfills the things that we have say, mentioned earlier, like they have they had no uh, past accidents or negative experience that much. So we're going to do, um, we're going to, we we we'll try to optimize our functions or our work in order to make those specific, maybe specific groups in order to make happy or what are we supposed to do uh, in order to attract those types of customers, okay? It can also detect fraud through the greatest fraud happen. Who is the greatest fraud happen, which means maybe which type of people uh, or from which area uh, or from which age group of people do um, most of the time do those type those kind of frauds and you know it's also used to identify that the measures and from the customer side uh, in data analytics to know which insurance company gives a minimum price with suitable of, with suitable offers so of course this is the things that the customer side can see but the, those the upper three are going to be the important one for our task so of course we're going to make an analytics right uh, or analysis on depending on the data that we have so there are four types of uh, data analysis in general not for the specific for the insurance company but we will try to see how we're going to or how we might adapt those uh, analysis uh, types of analysis to our specific project okay so the first one is descriptive analysis so descriptive analysis we can understand from the name it is what happened you know it's we're going to look for the history or for the data that we used to have from our uh, past experience of the company so this type of analytics is by far the most commonly used by customers providing reporting and analysis centered on past events so it's not going to be that hard since we're not they're not going to face data scarcity because they can use the data that's it is that is already there from the past history of the company so but it's going to describe what happened in the last year what was depending on the company of course we're going to make what the situation of that company from the selling from the uh, profit and other things let's see in this project let's try to adapt this for, for to our sorry specific project so descriptive analysis will involve in this case examining historical insurance claim data to understand past trades. So in claim frequency, claim amount, types of claims, customer demographic, geographical patterns, it's so we might know, like we, we we might have those type of data from our past experience, like the, our, the, the demographic area of our customer. Actually, you know, we have the data in this case, but so uh, in general, when we speak in general, using those kind of, kind of data, like claim frequency, we're going to use those keywords claim means um in the insurance world it's how much is going to yeah how much are you asking to, to the to the insurance company in order to uh, um in order to like in order to correct your accidents okay so if it is car accidents or something what how much are you going to ask the company in order you know it's kind of reimbursement okay uh so the claim amount types of claim and uh, the, the, using those kind of uh, data we can make uh, an, anal an analysis based on the previous data the second one is diagnostic analytics so in the first one we just said what happened on the past year or in the past something okay but on the second part on the second part we're going to do we're going to use those historical data data to answer a question so what is the question the what so uh so here what we we've just said what happened and okay sorry uh like we're going to answer the what so diagnostic analysis address the critical question of why an occurrence or anomaly occurred within your data so after that like seeing the data or analyzing the data on the first part we're going to see for some unique data which might need some elaboration or discussion okay so in order to if there are some errors in order to uh correct them 
So diagnostic analytics also happen to be the most overlooked and skipped state within the analytics maturity model. Um, so what happened to what will happen without ever taking the time to address the why did it happen state. So yes, it is just we're going to see, we see the errors happen, happening in a like, the negative side of a company or things like that, but we might not be ready still for, even for predicting for the next years or for the future. We might not be ready to answer the question, why did it happen? Stop. So in order to answer why it did happen, we're, we should do diagnostic analytics again. Let's see with an example of for the specific project. So for this company, uh, deeper into the descriptive findings to uncover the factors influ influencing claim frequency and risk labels. Okay, so um, probably uh, you're going to identify this on your on the first step. Okay, on on your the descriptive analysis if there might be frequent claim uh, requirements or very high level of risk. So we need to do some research. Why are those things happening? Because if they continue that way, it might it, it is definitely going to be a loss for the company. So. Uh, we should see if there are some scenarios like this, and then we can do, uh, or we can answer the thing, why did it happen, okay? So this could involve identifying correlations between factors such as drivers, demographics, vehicle types, geographical locations, and claim frequencies. So we're going to correlate those uh, parameters of data after seeing to, um, if there are some negative or this kinds of negative, uh, okay, this kinds of uh, indications, negative indications. So we've seen the, the descriptive and then the diagnostic analytics. So then we're going to make the predictive analysis. So as we told, as we have talked on the earlier, on the introduction part, uh, traditionally we just do the, the descriptive analysis, but not the predictive one. So recently it's, since predictive, you know, as you know, it's all, on every sector, it's more productive and more successful. It's form of, we're going to include predictive analysis here. And actually most of the, if you have, you had probably checked the document. So it's most of the things that we do is predictive analysis. So it's a form of advanced uh, analytics that determines what is likely to happen based on in the historical data using machine learning models and things like that. So we're not going to do the technical things, but uh, so we're going to use the historical data again to predict or to forecast for the future. So at the outset of any predictive analytics building, three core elements need to be established. The first one is identify a problem to solve, then define, okay, we, we've just identified the problem on the second part, hopefully, and then define what is, um, what is you want to predict and state what you will achieve by doing so, okay? So uh, what is you want to predict is, um, so it's related with the third point, okay? So uh, what type of things, what type of things or what type of parameters matters a lot in order for the company to succeed or in order to have uh, a better outcome uh, for the future? So then state what you will achieve by doing so, which means, um, yeah, of course, it's going to be related with the company's uh, success and achievement. So the predictive analysis would be used to develop models that predict um, the likelihood of future insurance claims. Again, this is the specific case for the, for this project. So a future insurance claim based on historical patterns. Okay, so how much uh, insurance claim might we have on the next year? Uh, so like it's going to be a really major data or major information for the company. And then the machine learning algorithm such as yeah, regression model or we can use different types of models, decision tree, in order to make the prediction. Actually, you're going to see the details or what type of models should we use and things like that on the tutorial, on other tutorial sessions. Yeah, this prediction informed the optimization of marketing strategies and premium adjust adjustments for low risk targets. Again, premium, it's the, yeah, the amount of money or uh, yeah, that the, the customer are going to pay constantly, like two months or something. So there's this payment that we make for the company, for the insurance company, right? So that is called the premium. And at last comes the prescriptive, prescriptive analytics. So it's the final pillar of uh, the modern analytics. And 
the pres uh, prescriptive analytics. It pertains to true guidance analytics, where your analytics is prescribing or guiding you towards a specific action to take. So here comes the final or the most important analysis. So after doing the analysis, after predicting some predictions and seeing um, in what trend or in what direction is going, is our prediction going? Like being careful to make the prediction true or accurate, and then we're going to make some ana and some analysis or recommendations uh, and based on the pre prediction. So it's effective. It is effectively the merging of descriptive, diagnostic, and the predictive. So every steps uh, or analysis that are mentioned on the above part. So the input, the in the use is in order to make recommendations and things like that, right? So let's see what type of recommendation maybe will benefit, will, will be useful or will benefit the company in our case. So pres pre prescriptive analysis, primary aim is to take the educated guess or assessment out of the data analytics and streamline the decision-making process. So for this uh, specific uh, case, it will involve recommending actionable insights based on the predicting models. For example, the analysis, uh, since there are two factors right on our uh, document, the first one is to do uh, like to, to do uh, a great marketing uh, campaign for those low risk target segments, right? So we're going to center or we're going to focus on the on the people who are low risk low risk target or with the people who don't create that uh, uh, accidents or problems or maybe fraud. And then we're going to do like the something will decide the marketing campaign for that specific uh, circle of uh, customers or target customers. So it could also suggest personalized over or incentives to attract new clients from those low risk segments, such as premium discounts or additional benefits. So yeah, we might uh, we might make some discounts for the on, the on the premium for those low risk target people, and we might put another ad additional benefits, okay? So those are, those can, can be actually, the, you can put many, uh, things from your perspective, but those might be, or those can be one of the conclusion or result that we can reach depending on our pres prescriptive analytics, okay? So maybe you have just mentioned about premiums, total claim, no claim discount, or <clears throat> there are many keywords related with the insurance company, so maybe uh, you need to know, we need to be familiar in, in order to understand the process and uh, to, do, to do the analysis we need to be familiar with some words so at least, uh, here we can be we can see uh, the three main keywords used in the insurance company the first one is premiums it's when you, i have just mentioned this idea actually that when you purchase purchase an insurance policy you will be required to make regular payment so that regular payment is called premiums and the total claim <laughs> For my request to your insurance company for coverage or reimbursement for a loss or damage, okay, and then no claim discount is, um, it's offer, uh, it's specifically for people who haven't filled any claims within a specific specified period. So you can consider it as a reward, okay. Uh, it's kind of making uh, the premiums lower, but it's somehow different because the reason is different. So you might make the premiums lower because uh because of another reason but if the reason is specifically um that person haven't filled any claims within specified period then it's called i say no claims discount okay so i think this would be um an entrance or an introduction for your data analysis so if you have any question or insights on the things that we have mentioned or sees uh that, that we have uh, saw here you're so welcome Okay, so any questions or insights? So maybe I, can you add or explain more the thing that say claim? Okay, so claim means, for example, let's say on this uh, case, we're dealing with company that is uh, uh, a car insurance company, right? So if the car have an accident or faces at some accidents, it's going, we're going to ask the company, the insurance company for reimbursement, right? So how much amount of money are you asking that insurance company in order to be reimbursed for your uh, for the accident or for your uh, insur insur insurance? Since you're insured, you're going to ask money, right? So that amount of money is called claim, okay? So uh, 
So here, total claims. If we say total claims, it's a formal request to your insurance company for co coverage or reimbursement for a loss or damage. So the, then the insurance company might confirm that if it is, uh, you might, they might say this is the right amount that you deserve or this is not the right amount you, you deserve. So we're going to minimize. So this is depending on their policy and the uh, way of uh, working. It might differ, but yeah, claim means the amount that you're going to ask for the specific damage. Is it clear, Nadia? Nadia, are we clear? Okay, Nadia, are you there? Any other experiment? And the no claim thing also, sure. So the no claim thing, it's uh, the opposite. Uh, actually, it's not definitely an opposite thing, but it's not related with claim. So no claim discount, it's a discount. So um, if you have, if you haven't uh, uh, faced any problem or accidents in a specific period of time, then you might, uh, the insurance company might lower your premiums over time, okay? That's kind of very wide. So if you, so it means that you're just paying money for the company, for the insurance company, but they're not reimbursing or they're not paying for nothing because you have, uh, you haven't faced any problem there, like for a large amount of time or things like that. So you're, they will consider you as a good customer, of course. So uh, you might have a no claim discount and that might appreciate you in order not, in order to, you know, and not to face accidents even for the future and things like that so it's a reward from the company to the customers who are a good customers which means in this case they haven't faced any accidents or problems in specified period of time are we good nadia no okay. uh, other questions or suggestions anyone maybe abraham i have heard uh, you asking about uh, how to make recommendation and things like that, you know. I am somehow confused about doing the recommendations. If I if I get you right, I think I heard you uh, saying, giving that suggestion on the introduction session. So is that clear now, maybe? Abraham, are you there? Okay. Mm, so yeah, so I think maybe the the only thing that I that I can recommend is uh, so doing those analysis. Don't forget to after doing every analysis and like reasonable analysis actually. Don't forget to put your recommendations and your insights since they are very important and they are so the, the base of the project. So don't forget to make your recommendations and try to follow the four types of analysis that we've mentioned here. Uh, uh, step by step, okay. So yeah, thank you. If you don't have any question, I think we can end the presentation here. Thank you.